blocked by Chalmers. Grant for the hat trick. Super Bowl, John Grant. Wonderful finish. The league leaders are on their way to victory. And worth can't describe it, you know. You dream of these things every day, you know, from being a kid and that. Just finally realise it. Just amazing, man. Really good to see you, John. It's uh, it's been a fair few years now, and it's since you were wearing the uh, the red and blue. Um, but I've got a, and we'll cover it. But I, I've got a bit of a, a sneaky feeling that that was the, the best time of your career when you were an order shop player. You certainly, you gave me the the impression how passionate you were about the club, how you enjoyed playing there, and obviously you were involved in in the best season that that, that, that the football club has ever had, and. We're obviously going to cover that in depth over the course of, of our conversation. But, but John Grant didn't start his career as a footballer at Aldershot in, in 2006. There's a, there's a big story behind that, isn't there? Before that, in terms of, um, of your footballing background and, and times that you're playing for Crew Alexandra, Shrewsbury, Halifax Town and that. So John Grant was a, an influential footballer before he came to Aldershot. Yeah, I started off young, really. My brother, uh, when he was younger, when he was 15, 16, he was at Man United with uh, Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs. All of them were like his age group. Then he got into difficulties off the pitch, but he mentored me as a father-like figure because my dad weren't around and stuff. So I ended up playing for a local team, Stratford Vicks. Um, a few pearls have come from there. And I ended up getting scouted by, by Crew Alexandra. I went into United City, etc. They all wanted to sign me as a kid. I was one of the best strikers around in Greater Manchester, but I loved my time at Crew. So I didn't want to leave. And, you know, I've had good good memories there. Steve Holland now was my youth coach. He was assistant manager at England. And, you know, I wouldn't change any part of my career, to be honest. And, and, and you say Steve Holland there. I mean, what, what a, you know... As you say, he's at England now with, with Gareth Southgate as, as assistant. Um, you're obviously very praiseworthy of him. Could you see that that ability that he had there? And are you surprised that he's progressed his career as he has? Not surprised at all, no. Because he he lived football, Steve. So even when I was a kid, when I was 14, if I'd play a match in the morning for crew, he would take me to goal. Like we watched a lot of Hyde United games. He was watching players in non-league and stuff then. So he used to take me to games. I used to stay at his of a weekend. I'd stay on the Friday, on the Saturday, uh, play on the Sunday. Uh, he'd bring me back. And at the time, there was a lot of violence, gun violence in Hume on my side where I grew up. And he used to come all the way from crew, pick me up, take me to my match and bring me back, you know. So he went out of his way for me. And, you know, I'm, I'm still in touch with him now. Went to a few games when he was Chelsea uh, assistant manager, Chelsea coach then. And, he, you know, he put me virtually on the bench. They've got, like, seats behind the subs. He put me there and he looked after me, host to be well. And I'm not one to ask for favours off, off uh, players or friends that I've got in football. And when I said that to him, he said, Granny, you can ring me anytime and it's there. Anytime you need my help or anything, you know, just call me and, and it's there for you. So it's good to have a relationship with him, you know, and he's not surprised me at all what he's done in football. Great coach. And... From there, you had a spell. You had a spell at Hereford United in, in 2002 um, in the conference. Had a, a successful season. They finished sixth. What, what are your memories of Hereford? It was a difficult time, really, because um, I played. I went on loan to Northwich when I was at when I was at Crew. Scored a few goals. Done done quite well. And then Graham Turner, a team, I met, went and met Graham Turner, and we were speaking about uh, negotiating fees and stuff. And I, I was, you know, my first club since crew, so I was uh, non, I didn't know any different. And he said, John, I want to sign you, but I can only offer this. And I'm saying, oh, I really can't come for this. I've got, you know, a kid, another kid on the way. And he said, let me speak to the chairman. Me not knowing that he was the chairman and manager. And he come back and said, look, you know, that's the best we can do. But I ended up signing. But the thing was, when I signed, after my first training session of, of come in uh, the changing room and I've, I've got a voicemail on my phone of Dave Penny who was then at Doncaster he wanted me to go there with Greg Blundell and I said to him I've just signed before training so I was gutted so that was kind of the way and then I broke my leg at Hereford but you know what I learned a lot from being being there because I was away from my family for the first time for a whole season but I couldn't couldn't quite settle you know they didn't see the, the true me to be honest but um, 
no, I learned a lot, so I'm thankful for all the learning that went on there. And then you had a season at Telford United, and, and, and I actually never realised, but you scored in the um, in the order shots five two win at Telford, which was a great game for us early on in the season when we just come back to national football and everything was on a high at order shot at, at that time under Terry Brown. But you, you scored. Do you remember that goal that you scored against? I do. Yeah, diving header. I played against. I think Warburton. Is it Warburton who were playing at the back for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. And he was very strong. Didn't like playing against him. I was still finding my way in non-league because you know what 23's football's like and played a few times for the first team at through in the championship and stuff. But it's totally different when you go into non-league. So what I do remember from that game, I remember Tim Sales and I was thinking, I'd love to play up front with him. I score loads of goals off him. Like, And I remember the fans, how brilliant the fans were. He sang all the way through the game and it was a great atmosphere, but you hammered us that game. And I thought, you know what? I'd love to play for them. And then we played you away um, for Telford again. And the, the fans were giving me a bit of stick when I was warming up. I think it was sub that game. But I always, I had a, from that moment, I had a great feeling about all the shot. I thought something might happen there, you know, in the future, you know. And in between that, you had, uh, obviously, at Shrewsbury Town. You joined Shrewsbury. Um, and that would have been just after they won playoffs to against Aldershot, wouldn't it? Going into the Football League. Yeah, that's right. Jimmy Quinn uh, called me because he had me at, at Northwich when he was Northwich manager. He was the manager on loan then. What a great guy. Should still be in football, really. And um, he called me and he knew about the situation at Telford. You know, I think there was an embargo. The club was going out of existence, which was a shame because we had a really good FA Cup running. It was a good time there. So, yeah, he signed me there and he didn't keep his job that long. Um, so that was unfortunate and Gary Peters has come and he's got his new own ideas and brought his own players in so I only managed I think to start eight games uh, scored two but you know what the fans the fans were really good there and I enjoyed my time at Shrewsbury and it was just unfortunate but that's football you just you got to move on you know and then you did move on and uh, a successful season at Halifax Town 05-06 top scorer scored against Aldershot again so yeah. um, you're, you're getting your tally up by that time and just fell short in the playoff final, ironically, against, against your old club, Hereford. Yeah. Great times at, at Halifax. It was difficult with the fans. The fans were... Uh, I don't think the fans really took to me at Halifax. I don't know why, like, because um, I always I always gave 100% and what have you, but the fans didn't really take to me. But, um, you know, Chris Wilder was brilliant. His man management was brilliant. Like, I think the very... Um, they want a lot of Halifax because they've had, you know, a good history in the league and stuff. So the demands are quite high, you know. But I just didn't feel like that love uh, from the fans there, you know, which was unfortunate, especially when the season I finished leading goal scorer. But Chris Wilder was brilliant, you know, and that's something that I needed at that time because I had thoughts in the back of my mind. I was thinking, you know what, is this football for me? Should I carry on and stuff? And uh, Tufty, as we call him, Chris Wilder, he just reinvigorated me and, you know, put a lot of desire and I learned a lot of him. I got mentally, that's when I started to get mentally tough that year. Before that, I'd, I'd let things affect me, confidence and stuff. Chris Wilder helped me a lot. He really did. And then, of course, there's another manager who's gone all the way through to the, the Premier League. We've we done a fantastic job wherever he's been, really, at all the different clubs. And, of course, Sheffield United, although they're having a, a, a tough season this time round, uh, to get Sheffield United into the Premier League the way he did, using a lot of players that were actually playing in League One, it's sort of testament to the kind of guy he probably is. Brilliant guy. Very loyal. Very loyal to his players, you know. You know, the ones that helped him uh, grow as a manager, he, you know, he kept him kept them on board and let them experience the Premier League and stuff. Maybe this season he has to change that a bit, you know, because they're struggling. I went there last uh, pre-season, not this one, because of COVID. So I went there to speak players and stuff with him. Still same guy, still having a laugh and what have you. It was really funny on away games. You know, on the way back, he'd it, get drunk and have fights with players and stuff and start. It, I know it sounds bad, but he'd start, he'd be speaking to someone and he'd be like, weeing on a player, like, and you'd be like, wow, what's going on here? Like, but the lads uh, took the crack and what have you. He was a great laugh, Chris Wilder, you know, loved to drink on the way back, but he's a, exactly the same person. I respect him for that, you know, not changed at all. That was good. And so from there, 2006 and eventually came around your opportunity to to join Aldershot. So how did it materialise in the first place that you, you became an Aldershot player? Yeah, I met at first I met Terry Brown. I met him on the in Birmingham. 
just off the M6 in Birmingham, uh, just in the car. So I just got my car, got in his car, because the next day I think I was going Mexico. I was going Cancun. I had a good feeling then. And then while I was in Cancun, I agreed with my agent at the time, Andy Sprott and uh, Terry Brown that I'd signed. So as soon as I got back, um, I met him at the pub, which was at the back of the uh, back of the ground. Uh, I forgot the name of the pub now, but I got Lef- there. Lef- Lef- Lefontaine, was it? It might have been that. It was yeah. an old pub. Yeah, but I got there and it, yeah, it was roasting art, sat on the benches outside. Uh, Terry Brown was there with Carl Prentice and they had a big pint and big gold chains. I thought, yeah, what's going on here? It's a bit, you know, look like Dell Boys. They had chains bigger than VA Barracas. Like. So I was having a laugh with them and I just had a great feeling from then on. And I was re- really thankful that, you know, Terry Brown and Martin Kill believed in me and brought me to the club. You know, it was a, a big change because... Despite all the other teams I played for, it was only really crew and older shot where I was in love, you know, with the club. The other ones, it was just work. I'm just working, but here I was in love, you know. So it was it was great to come. And so you you make your dev- debut against Gravesend and Northfleet, and you score twice on your debut, which is always a, a good start. But I was just looking through the players that played in that game, some debutants, and there's players like Ricky Newman, Reese Day, Mark Molsey. Uh, Marcus Gale, Louis Swords. It was a near enough a, a new squad, wasn't it, that, that Terry had put together. There was, to be fair, a fair bit of expectation that season to to do well and couldn't have started any better because if I remember rightly, we were 2 0 down, won the game 3 2. I think Ricky Newman had been sent off, although it later got rescinded. And, you know, welcome to the, the madhouse, really, for you. Yeah, it was a great atmosphere, you know, mixed emotions, you know, coming back uh, from behind. I think Ryan Scott got the winner, didn't he? I'm sure Ryan Scott got the winner. He was a good lad because Mm. he really helped me when I first moved up. He helped me find a house to live in and stuff. And he was taking me to places to eat, shopping and stuff. So I'm really uh, thankful for Ryan. But yeah, I remember uh, Braves and the Northfleet. Um, That that was a great game. And it's always good, you know, to get a goal goal or two on your debut because it just gives you that rhythm and that confidence just to to kick on then. really does. And we, we, we moved on, a, we, we, you settled in well, you scored two in a, a 5-3 win at St Albans. We played Stevenage, we beat them 4-0 at home early on and settled in really well. And, and that, that, like you said there, it, it's really important, isn't it, to do that as a player because if you can show the fans what you're capable of early on, it just settles things down so you can become your real self. It's true, yeah, because, you know, if, you, if you're ever trying to impress, you know, the more games that go on, the fans stop believing in you know as a player no matter what anyone says you can feel that energy but I felt I felt great energy from from the fans from the start and to the end even when I was having difficult times I felt good vibes and good energy from the, the fans I think the older shop fans are you know really good because they see that you're putting a shift in no matter what they'll support you they'll stay with you so I always thought through bad times I thought you know I have to really work hard and they appreciate that and they see that and if if fans see that you're doing that, you know, they they stay on side with you. Um, so I thought it was important. And those players I've mentioned there, there's some real characters in there, isn't there? And, and some strong characters. Um, you know, you know, I look there, Reece Day, Ricky Newman, certainly. Um, Mark Molsey, of course, now is uh, managing at Southend and uh, had a really tough start because it's a difficult club to come into because they've had a lot of problems behind the scenes. But looks like he's turning it around, which is great to see. And, and um Marcus Gale, another one with a fantastic footballing pedigree in that. So to be amongst those kind of guys, how, how was that? It was good being with Gale, a room with Gale. So he always had stories. It was funny, you know, really funny. He always used to hammer me because I love my biscuits and stuff like um, So he used to hammer me with that. But Gale really helped me, you know, his experience. So I just wanted to be around him and sponge a lot off of him. You know, his runs that he pe- peeled off to the back post. He was unplayable in the air. He, not, he didn't have the athleticism that he used to have when he was younger, but his brain was very good. So I learned a lot of him. He was brilliant. And Mark Mosley, he's a character, you know, he's the joker in the dressing room. I miss Mark. I actually spoke to him a couple of weeks ago trying to help him with players. We said they had, um, I think they had a transfer embargo or they weren't allowed to bring many players in. But I've seen he signed someone today, so I'll be calling him, see if he wants to take any players that I've, that I've seen. But he's a good lad, Mosley. Same guy, funny guy. And as that season went up, it became a little bit up and down in, in certain respects. It always looked like we were on the periphery, but couldn't quite push it forward to get into that sort of playoff contention. But we did have an FA Cup run, of course, and uh, all ended up in the, in the third round and a, and, a, and a visit to Blackpool. 
Yeah, it was brilliant. You know, that, that was a great day out at Blackpool. I remember because they had, I think, one of their stands, they, it was open, wasn't it? Um, yeah. It was a great atmosphere, you know, a good game. I was happy to score in that game, be Blackpool at Bloomfield Road. And that's probably the most visited ground I've been to. Because over the past few years, I've scouted a few players and they've signed three of them. So I, I was going to Blackpool virtually every weekend, every other weekend. So it's a great, a great club, Blackpool. And that was a great day out. I don't know what you did after that. I'm sure. Some of the fans went out on the uh, into Blackpool for a night out because he was asking me to come and what have you. I remember. <laughs> and I'm looking at we, we I've got to mention this game, John. We played Burton Albion yeah. um, around about that time, just after the Blackpool game, and uh, we beat them three two. You scored, but you also got sent off after the final yeah. whistle. We, we, we've got to have a little chat about that one. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember, it's my second sending off. To be fair, in my career, like, and uh, I think I was frustrated. I think it was last minute. I was, I think I was trying to waste time, so I stepped in front of the ball, and the lads pushed me, so I swung out. Absolutely, I missed him completely. Uh, I think it was Braveford, and we spoke about that because we, I think we went England C together and stuff, and um, I lashed out at him. No, it wasn't him. It was a striker. Striker lashed out. At, I forgot his name. Shaw. Sure, that that was it. I totally missed him, and I, I was lucky really because the intention, the intention was there. So I've gone in the dressing room, and the referees come in. I thought, what, what does he want me for? Like, um, he's coming and said, uh, John Grant, I'd like to come back on the pitch. So I didn't know they could send you off after a game, so he called me down onto the steps and gave me a red card. So yeah, it was it was strange. First time I, I didn't even know it existed. First time I'd ever seen it. So yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Grant and Raver, but as a coach, Cooley was up there with, with the best coaches I've had, and I'd say that along with Steve Holland. And you see where Steve's going, and, and Cooley's football brain was was really good. Yeah. Terry Brown as well, you know, because he, he brought most of them lads in. So Tell's got to take it, you know, a lot of credit, and Carl Prentice as well. Yeah. 